Salon Chaturid and welcome back my fellow language learners to Adventures in Language. I'm your guide, Emily. It's true. Mastering pronunciation in a new language can be really challenging, but you shouldn't feel bad about it because there are real underlying reasons that explain why that's the case. In this video, I'm summarizing the three things that you need to know about pronunciation so that you can feel more confident and in control of your language learning process. And for those of you who might not know me yet, I'm Emily. I'm a linguist at Mango. I've got my PhD in linguistics and a true passion for language learning. Well, bidonitola, let's get to it. Okay, so here are the three main reasons why mastering pronunciation can be difficult. Number one, different sound inventories. Number two, different tones. And number three, the reality of something called sound blending. Let's break those down. Number one, different sound inventories. This is the most obvious of the three points. Simply put, different languages use different sounds. Think consonants like b, d, g, and vowels like a, e, i, o, u. For example, it's likely that your target language has some sounds that you don't have in your native language repertoire. Take the trilled R in Spanish, for example. That's the R sound in the word perro, perro. English doesn't have that trilled R consonant in its sound inventory, so it can take some time and effort to master that new sound for English speakers. And guys, even when there are similar vowels and consonants, it's not always a one-to-one -one correspondence. For example, English and Spanish both have the P sound or the P sound. Linguists call that a voiceless bilabial plosive consonant, but we'll just call it the P sound. But here's the thing, the Spanish P sound uses measurably less outward airflow than the English P sound. That's why when English speakers are learning Spanish, one common piece of feedback they receive is to make the P's less airy. Instead of saying Pablo, say Pablo. There are actually a bunch of cool tricks for mastering these different pronunciation differences. For example, when it comes to getting your airflow right on these consonants, you can take a piece of tissue paper and try saying it both ways. For example, Pablo, 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 Pablo. Cool, right? Moving on. And beware, just because a language uses a letter that you recognize from your native language's alphabet doesn't mean it's going to have the sound that you expect. For example, the letter W in German is pronounced more like the English V. In linguistics, we call this a voiced labial velar approximate. But for now, we'll call it the V sound. So the word for world in German is spelled with a W at the beginning, but it's pronounced Welt. Welt. Main point, you can't always expect the same letter to have the same sound in other languages. Different languages, different sounds. Moving on to number two, different tones. You'll often hear bilingual people say that they think their voice changes when they speak their different languages. And among linguists, that's actually a known phenomenon that has been studied. For example, relative to English, Korean has a higher fundamental frequency. That's the term for pitch. So it's not uncommon for the same person to say hello, in a nice low pitch in English, and annyeong in a slightly higher pitch when speaking Korean. And then of course, the prosody of sentences can sound super different in different languages too. What do I mean by prosody? I mean the fluctuation of my pitch throughout the duration of a sentence. So to stick with this English-Korean comparison, in my dialect of English, I might say something like, where y'all going? My pitch fluctuates from mid to high to low. Where y'all going? But that same sentence in Korean would have a very different prosody. Taodiga, taodiga, high, low, high. Different languages, different prosody. And then factor in tonal languages like Mandarin Chinese, which have an understandable learning curve for people who speak atonal languages like English. In simple terms, tonal languages are languages for which a change in pitch of your voice can change the meaning of a word. For example, the word 睡觉 means to sleep, but 睡觉 means dumpling. To sleep and dumpling, two different meanings. Long story short, different languages use different tones, different pitches, and different prosodies. Okay, we're here at our last point, point number three, the reality of sound blending. Did you ever notice how the word mountains gets pronounced differently when you say it in isolation, like mountains, versus in a full sentence, like I enjoy the mountains. Let's listen back to that one more time. I enjoy the mountains. Mountains. This difference is because of sound blending. Sound blending is essentially the verbal equivalent of cursive writing. It's the process by which sounds change 
based on the words around them. And it usually happens with faster, connected, more casual speech. The reason this can be tough for language learners is that you may have learned your vocabulary words in isolation and you can pronounce them perfectly individually. But when you put them into context in full, fast, connected speech, your speech might end up sounding stilted or a little bit robotic. To learn more about what sound blending is, how it works, and how you can improve your own sound blending to sound more natural in your target language, check out the video that we've linked for you in the description. Psst, did you know that the Mango Languages app uses real human voices, not robot voices? So while you're learning within the app, you're getting authentic exposure to that natural sound blending. And really cool feature, we record our audio at two different speeds. First in slow, carefully articulated speech like Vendée. De. And then also as quick, natural sounding blended speech like Vous vendez des cartes postales? Well, there you have it. Three reasons why mastering pronunciation can be so difficult. To recap, they were one, different sound inventories, two, different tones, and three, the reality of sound blending. Oh, and last thing, when you're faced with the difficult task of pronunciation mastery, it can be really helpful to reflect on your personal language learning goals. How do you want to sound in the language? What level of proficiency are you aiming for? How important is pronunciation to you? If you'd like a fun and easy worksheet to help you with that, then check out our free Setting Good Goals worksheet, which you can access through the link in the description. Well, my fellow language learners, that's all for this time on Adventures in Language. If you're new here and you'd like to make sure that you are up to date on all of our awesome language learner content, then come join the Mango Fam by subscribing to the channel. Wondering what languages were used in today's video? You can find all that information and more in the description down below. Well, Khuda Hafez, and I look forward to seeing you here next time. Bye! Don't forget to get your free Setting Good Goals worksheet, which you can access through the link right here on the screen. In our next video, I'll be sharing several simple and actionable tips that you can use to improve your pronunciation in any language. If you want to be the first to know when that video goes live, then ring that notification bell. In the meantime, you can catch up on all of our existing videos right here. See you next time on Adventures in Language.